Testing, one, two, test, there we go. No, that was <laughs> That was me. We good? All right. Good morning. Welcome in. We are glad to have you with us today. You survived the time change. This is an easy time change, right? The time change when you fall back instead of springing forward one day before I die. I hope that goes away. Just between me and you and the fence post, I hope that goes away. Uh, welcome into worship here at Forest Park Church. We are honored to have you today. As you received your bulletin this morning, a couple of things in there that you should have gotten. One of those is an insert that looks like this. This goes along with our uh, communion liturgy that we're going to be sharing uh, later on in the service today. The other one is what I want to point out to you now, and it's a connection card. And I would uh, really appreciate it if you would take time to reach in front of you and grab one of the pens that you see there. Uh, it's one of our nice, uh, neat-looking little uh, Forest Park pens. And uh, f fill out this card. If you're a regular attender, um, just give us your name. And if you change your email address or phone number or something, let us know about that. But if you're a first or second time guest today, I would appreciate you sharing with us as much information as you feel comfortable sharing with us. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. As you make your way down the card there, make sure if you're a first or second time guest or a regular uh, attender or member, check the boxes over there and let us know how you heard about Forest Park Church if you are new with us. And the reason I like you to fill this out is not just so we can have a record of your visit, but on the back you will see that we are, um, we feel like that in our services we're always leading and calling you to take next steps with Jesus. And on the back of the card there are some things there that uh, will help you uh, communicate to us where you are in your spiritual walk and exactly what's going on if, in your life. If you need help with prayer, we'll be glad to help you there. If you would like to volunteer, we would be honored to help you find a place to volunteer within the church. We're going to take just a couple of moments now and cover a very few of the announcements that you find in your bulletin. Generally what I do uh, and what I've adapted of late with the, uh, with the bulletin is this, uh, a healthy respect for your ability to go through that and read it as you uh, feel led. Somebody gave me a coffee cup uh, for pastor's appreciation last year. And I think I've shared it with you before. This is a regular coffee cup, but on it it says, it's in the bulletin. <laughs> Been there for weeks. Been there for weeks at the bottom of it. Uh, it. Generally, if it's important enough for us to talk about, we're going to put it in the bulletin. But uh, my my tack of the past couple of uh, months has been, I'm only going to mention those things that are applicable to at least 50% of the church. So as we look through our announcements this morning, we have a Christmas tea coming up for the women's ministry, senior adult ministry, men's ministry going strong there. Our Wednesday night dinner coming up November 8th at 5 o'clock, chicken pot pie, mashed potatoes. Be sure that you sign up for that. Uh, women's ministry going strong there as well. We extend our deepest sympathy to Tom Upton. Tom, and we've been praying for you and for Donna on the passing of your mom, Miss Sandra. We have an ordination service for our church. It's going to be coming up Sunday, November 19th at 5 p.m. That's going to be a very special time for us here at the church as we will be ordaining our very first ministers here at the church. Um, and we hope that you can join us for that. We hope that you will be here uh, to join us for that. We need some van drivers. Today, as you come to the communion altar, if you leave a communion offering today, it will go to our No Fret Guitar Camp. The uh, details of that are listed there. Shoebox Ministry up and going very, very strong. 
Ruth Circle has their bake sale coming up. On the back of your bulletin, uh, there are a number of listings there about our children's ministry, our student ministry. One that I want to share with you particularly because I know we have a, a lot of grandparents here uh, in this particular service. This year Sam is going to do an FP Kids and Student Ministry Thanksgiving Potluck. You can read those details in the bulletin there. It's going to be not just for the kids and for the students but for their families as well so the families can mingle and get to know each other a little little bit better and as always there is a record of our um, faithfulness here at the church today is a very special Sunday in our church but before we get there let me welcome you once again to Forest Park Church my name is David Willis it's my privilege to be the pastor here and we're honored whether you are here in the sanctuary or whether you are watching online your presence means a lot to us especially today Today is the first Sunday in November, and in the Wesleyan uh, tradition, it is All Saints Sunday. All Saints Sunday is the first Sunday in November, and it is a day of remembrance for the saints, with the New Testament meaning of all Christian people of every time and place. Today we celebrate the communion of saints as we remember the dead, both of the Church Universal and particularly of our local <laughs> congregation. For this reason, the names of people in our congregation who have passed away during the past year will be shared and a candle will be lighted in their memory. I would ask that you please stand. Today, we remember Wiley Clark. We remember Joyce Hedge. Today, we remember Ricky Coomer. We remember Beth Adams. On this special day, we remember Jane Daly, Joey Farrell, Jerry Allen. Today, we remember Jean LeClaire. Jean Reinhardt. Today, we remember Sandra Upton. Let us pray. Father, we bless your holy name for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and their faithfulness to your honor, to your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, now and forever. Amen. Please remain standing. God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. We pray that as we move into worship now, you would inhabit our worship and praise and that as we offer our best to you, you would be present today through the power of the Holy Spirit. May all of the things that seek to separate us from you, that seem to come to life with new vigor during the week, may those things melt away and may we rest now in your presence as we worship. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated.
on this beautiful Sunday morning. How many of you came to the, to the combined service last week? A lot of you. Well, last week you got to hear all of my favorite songs. So just remember that if you have a favorite song that you want to hear, send them to, send them, put them in the offering or let one of us know and we'll, you'll be able to hear one of those songs soon. If you please stand, we're going to do another one of my favorites this morning. Actually, somebody else requested this one too, but it's a great, great song that you'll remember called When We All Get to Heaven. Let's continue our worship now as we join together and recite our Apostles' Creed, our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. There we go. No, no. They were, gr gremlins abound this morning in our electronics. 
There they are. Brother Michael, come share with us this morning from uh, God's Word, Old Testament reading. Thanks, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're reading this morning from the uh, book of Isaiah, the 35th chapter, the first seven verses. Hope of restoration of Israel. Beginning with the first verse, even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The deserts will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. There the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. With this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams will water the wasteland. The parched ground will become a pool, and the springs of water will satisfy the thirsty land. Marshland and reeds and rushes will flourish where the jackals once live. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Pastor. Let's take time to pray once more. Bow with me. Father God, we mentioned earlier the things that come between us and you. It seems that each day a new thing crops up to capture our attention, our heart, it seems that each day a new thing crops up to lay hold to our mind. Father, those things need to pass away. Those things need to find their proper place. For we have before us the example of the saints who have gone on to their glory. Those things should occupy our mind and our heart. They lived the example set for us, and now it is our turn to carry that flame forward. God bless us to be able to do that. Give us strength, give us hope, give us peace, even in difficult times. Let us know that you're with us, that you are beside us, guiding our way. We thank you that we worship a God who is willing to do that for his creation. And we pray that that truth would come to life, not only in our lives, but within our church. Yes. Father God, we ask that you today would bring your healing touch to those in our congregation who are ill, those who are broken, those who are infirm. As we always do, we lift those who are struggling with loneliness and depression those who suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are working now, that we may be safe while we worship. We ask your blessings upon not only them, but the women and men of our armed forces and those who would seek to lead us, whether they are in elected positions, whether they represent us um, at a church level, at a local, state, or national level. We pray, Father, that you would have their ear, that you would bless them with the intestinal fortitude to move forward and be representative of those who have elected or appointed them. And God, we pray now, as we pray at this time each week, when you ask, when we ask that you teach us to pray, just as you told your disciples, when you told them to say this, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. pray. Father, as we continue our worship this morning through the giving of our tithes and our offerings, we pray once again that your spirit would visit us in a mighty way. We give today because we love. We love because you first loved us. You have given us the example. You have laid it before us, and we follow now as we worship according to that example. 
Bless the tithes. Bless the offerings that we bring to you today. May they be multiplied to move into the world. Spread the saving gospel of your son. This is our humble prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. be seated. There we go. Well, it seems that the air conditioner took care of some of our flames. I think Jerry Allen just wanted some more attention. Well, 
we've got Ricky Coomer and Gene Reinhardt that are there. So we're going to move them over just a little bit because um, I'm wearing a robe and a tie and we're not turning off the air conditioner. That's, that's just all there is to it. I love you. They're all smiling. One wick gave up. And we'll see what happens here. There we go. Oh, this wick's about to give up. No, that one's a goner. That one's a goner. This one. There we go. All right, Gene, don't let me down. There we go. Gene was a green beret with several combat tours in Vietnam. And this candle is not living up to his renown. Mercy sakes. There we go. Wiley, Joyce, Beth, Jane, Joey, Jerry, Jean, Sandra. Sorry. Jean Reinhardt and Ricky Coomer. They're going strong. So we'll let them represent everybody else. How about that? You've been there before. You know what I'm talking about when I say um, that'll leave a mark. You're, you're sitting in your car, uh, maybe in uh, a parking lot, and who, who knows why you're still sitting there after you've parked. But there you are, and somebody pulls in beside you, and uh, through no fault of their own, intentionally anyway, they um, open the door and bang, they hit your car. And the first thing you think is, blah, that'll leave a mark. That'll leave a mark. You get up in the middle of the night, and you know that uh, you're going to have to get up. It's cold. You don't want to get out of bed. You know that you're going to have to make the walk to get a drink of water. And on the way to the faucet, you find that thing that is hidden by the dark, or should I say, your pinky toe on your right foot finds that thing that is in the way, in the dark, and as you hop around, you think, oh, that'll leave a mark. You are uh, doing odd jobs in the garage, and out of nowhere, that one thing that you've done a million times before is the one thing that jumps up and punches you right between the eyes and you think, oh, that'll leave a mark. Now, if you're here or you're watching and you're young enough that you can survive a bump into the wall and not have a bruise, your time is coming. Amen? Okay? The older I get, the more fragile my skin gets, and I can just do something like brush up against uh, the door as I walk into a room, and, and that'll leave a mark. Well, that'll leave a mark. That's the name of our new sermon series. For the next few Sundays, we're going to talk about leaving our mark, how it is that we make a mark in the kingdom of heaven. Not a negative mark, but a positive mark. They left a mark. And we can leave a mark as well. It doesn't matter what you face. It doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter what we all go through. We have the opportunity to leave a mark in God's kingdom. And we're going to be talking about that for the next few weeks. Today I want to share with you uh, some selected readings out of the Gospel of John chapter 9. Now, as close as possible, they're going to pop up on the screen, but I can't guarantee you they're going to be exactly like what I say. But you'll get the idea as we read through this interchange between Jesus and a man born blind. If you have your Bibles, you can open them to John 
chapter 9, we'll be taking a look at Jesus speaking with a man born blind. John chapter 9 verse 1 says, As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind from birth. Teacher, his disciples ask him, why was this man born blind? Was it a result of his own sins or those sins of his parents? Well, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. He was born blind, so the power of God could be seen in him. But while I am still here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spat upon the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smoothed the mud over the blind man's eyes. And he told him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. Verse 8 tells us that his neighbors and others knew him, who knew him as a blind beggar, asked each other, is this the same man, the beggar? Some said he was, and others said, no, he surely looks like that man. And the beggar kept saying, I am the same man. And they asked him, who healed you? What happened? They told him, the man they called Jesus made mud and smoothed it over my eyes. And he told me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash off the mud. I went and washed, and now I can see. The Pharisees called the man in who had been blind and told him, give glory to God by telling the truth because we know Jesus is a sinner. I don't know whether he's a sinner, the man replied, but I know this. I was blind and now I can see. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, who is he, sir? Because I would like to. You have seen him, Jesus said, and he is speaking to you. Yes, Lord, the man said, I believe, and he worshiped Jesus. Yes, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped Jesus. What this man did was simply tell his story. That's what I'll share with you today about leaving your mark. Your story, your interaction with Jesus is the most powerful faith-building tool that you have to share with others. How has God intersected your life? How has God intersected your life? As I've told you time and time again, no one can argue with that story. No one can doubt that story because it is your story and it is the story of how your creator came into your life and, and changed you. So as we talk about leaving our mark, as we talk about making our mark for the kingdom of God, the first thing that I want to tell you is you really need to know your story and to know your story you need to know that you have a story in churches just like this all around the world today there are people sitting in churches who think they have a story but they don't they are the ones that think as I was talking with a friend earlier this week who told me that one of her friends said, I don't understand why you are Christian. You were born Catholic. Well, first of all, I didn't know Catholics weren't Christian. And second of all, I didn't know you were born into a particular religion. But apparently this individual thinks they are. They think they have a story with Jesus, but they don't. Oh, they have a story, but their story is with a particular denomination. They have a story, but their story is not a story of relationship. It is a story of their life with a particular religion. We have people today, people that we know and that we love 
who are following denominations and ignoring the relationship. We have people that we know and that we love who this very day are following religion and rules and ignoring the relationship that they assume they have. Oh, the relationship might be there, but their priorities are out of line. It's difficult to leave a mark for the kingdom of God when the whole of who you assume God to be is so firmly rooted in your religious practices. Know that you have a story. To make a mark for the kingdom of God, know that you have a story. You've got to know it before you can tell it. First John chapter 5 says this, Jesus speaking, I write this to you who believe in the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. I, I write this to you who believe in the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. It's not something secret that God wants to keep away from you, this possessing eternal life. It's not something that God wants you to hide in your heart and keep away from others. It is something that God wants you to use to leave your mark in this place. Now, you're going to foul up, I'm going to foul up, we're going to mess things up, but that doesn't change who we are in God's story. And who we are in God's story is an intricate part of our story with God. One of the things that I'll share with you also is the idea that not only do you need to know your story, you need to be willing to tell your story. The best way to do that is simply to ask God to use that story. Acts chapter 20 says, But my life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about God's wonderful kindness and love. 1 Timothy chapter 1 says, This is why God had mercy on me, so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of this great patience with even the worst sinners. And others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. Not only do you need to know you have a story, you have to be willing to tell that story. The disciples had an incomplete understanding of this as Jesus called them together to celebrate what we know as the Last Supper. They had an incomplete understanding that Jesus was giving to them this particular ability to leave their mark on this earth, not for their glory, but for His glory. They had an incomplete understanding that God was calling them not only to convey their story to others, but to bury that story so deeply in the hearts of Christ's followers that they too take up the same mantle. And here we are today. Here we are. It's ours to take up that torch. It's ours to step outside the walls of the church, to tell our story, to know that we have a story to tell, so that others, as I say often when I pray, can know Christ the way that we do. And yet and still he drew his disciples together, and they gathered in the upper room, and they celebrated the Last Supper and as we are wont to do in the church, we do love to remember, and we come together today to commemorate that Last Supper. Now, if you're here today, and you're of a different faith tradition, and you're not really sure what's going on, remain calm. Okay? First, let me tell you this. We're going to come to the communion table, and 
We're going to have some bread and we're going to have some juice. And I'm going to explain to you in just a few moments through the communion liturgy what that bread and juice represent. But the very first thing that I want to tell you is this. This is not our table. This is not the table of Forest Park Church. This is not the pastor's table. This is God's table. This is the table of the Lord, the Lord who gave rise to you. So here, you are welcome, regardless of your faith tradition. You're welcome to come and take these elements that represent God's body and blood, even if you've already had some coffee, or even if you've already eaten breakfast. Those of you who are here in a Catholic tradition or an Episcopal tradition will appreciate me saying that. You will understand at least. You're welcome to come and take these elements. If, if you can answer these three simple questions that we're going to share with each other in just a few moments. Do I love God? Am I sorry for my sin? Do I want to live at peace with my neighbor? It's all there in the liturgy. And lastly, what I want to tell you is remain calm. Even though we're going to say some things together, it doesn't mean that we're a cult. Hey, a lot of people freak out about that. You know how I know people freak out about that? Because I freaked out about it the first time I, I heard a responsive reading. God is here. God is in this place. And God is drawing you into a renewed relationship with him. To remember your story to remind you of your story and to gel that story within your heart so that in this act of coming forward and participating in this sacrament you may be re-energized to step into the world and leave your mark. It's a mark that's not going to devalue your vehicle. It's not a mark that's going to leave your body bruised or broken. It is a mark that is impactful on the life of others so that they may come to know who you are, but more importantly, who Christ is through you. As we prepare to do this, I invite you to bow with me. God bless this time that we have with each other and open our hearts to the truth of this liturgy that we are about to share. Bless us with your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You have in your bulletin the insert that says a service of word and table. It looks like that. Pretty self-explanatory. I read those words in regular typeface. We read in unison those words that are in bold typeface. Let us begin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Uh, it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and 
all the company of heaven. We praise your name, and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And the church says, Amen. Those who are assisting with communion would come forward. Michael, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Michael, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Father, as we serve today, may the love of Christ come to life within us in new ways. As we come to take these elements together, may we all be blessed beyond measure by the power of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, the communion table is open. I would ask that you line up along both walls, outside walls, and uh, fill the altar as you come forward here to there. And as you come forward, go ahead and kneel, and we will serve the elements to you. Hold those elements until you are directed to partake. I'll have a prayer. Then after the prayer is over, you may rise and return to your seats up the center aisle.
Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. Let us pray. God, in our kneeling, we admit to humility, to worship, to reverence and awe. In our rising, we admit to the power that is alive within us through your spirit. Let us rise now to go and serve that you may be glorified through us. In Christ's name, amen. You may fill the altar again. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. Let us pray. Father, your word tells us that in our rising and in our lying down, you know us. We give you thanks for that. It is good to be known by our creator. It is priceless to be loved by the same. It is unspeakable to be forgiven. God, let us take that forgiveness into the world and share it with others. We offer this prayer as we rise in Christ's name. Amen. You may fill the altar again. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. 
let us pray. God, as we rise, let us rise revived. Let us rise renewed. Mm -hmm. Let us take what we have into the world that others may know you the way that we do. And we offer this prayer with hope in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are so honored by your presence with us today, and thank you for sharing this very special Sunday with us. We're going to open the altar as we close with song today, in case you did not have an opportunity to get to spend as much time as the altar, at the altar as you would prefer. Uh, As we rise to sing, I invite you to come forward as you feel the need. I'll come in just a few moments and pronounce a benediction. Stand together as we close. receive this benediction as you depart. Let us move into the world to leave our mark, doing so with the telling of our story, the story that we know, the story that we share so that others may know. You don't do this alone. You do this with the love of God, 
with the peace of Christ and with the power of the Holy Spirit moving you forward. In his name and for his glory, amen. Thank you for coming.